Okay, Dave Lundy, Regional Vice President for OPSU in uh, Region 4, Eastern Ontario, representing uh, 21,000 OPSU members. Today is uh, June 26th, and we're on the way to uh, G20 Rally, downtown Toronto. So, the members that are going on this bus today, and uh, the community, community group members too, uh, we're on the bus to, to deliver a message to, to our federal government and, and to our provincial government because I'm sure they're paying attention is that it's time to organize society in a different way. It's time to organize the economy in a different way. It's time to put people first. It's time to put Main Street before Bay Street. Okay, The, uh, the, the current economic situation was caused by bankers, was caused by Wall Street, was caused by Bay Street. And frankly, it should be Wall Street and Bay Street that are paying for it, not you and I. We're, we're here to say, Flaherty, Harper, there's a different way to organize the economy. There's a way that you put people first. In other words, let's not, let's not cut government revenues and then turn around and give those revenues to corporations. Because we know that tax cuts don't create jobs. If tax cuts created jobs, we'd be swimming in them. There's been $160 billion in corporate tax cuts since uh, Paul Martin took government in uh, federally. And here in, here in Ontario, since uh, Mike Harris has been over $40 billion in, in, in uh, corporate tax cuts. Our, our actual, federally, our corporate tax rate is lower than the U.S. rate, and here in Ontario, our, our Ontario provincial tax rate for corporations will be lower than neighboring U.S. states. I mean, that's ridiculous. So, what are you? What are your expectations and hopes by attending the rally today? Well, we hope to send a message that uh, it's it's time to to review your priorities. It's it, you know the Canadians are fed up. You know, we when they look around, we we've, we've went through uh, a generation now of. of tax cuts, round after round of corporate tax cuts, uh, treaty after treaty of, of international free trade uh, agreements, and every one of those was, was guaranteed to deliver you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs to Canada and, and to boost our standard of living. When in point of fact, every single one of those things has undermined our communities. Now we're mostly all, well we're all from Eastern Ontario here on this bus, and we've, we've experienced firsthand just how how devastating these tax cuts have been to our local economy and just how devastating these free trade agreements have been to our local economy. When, I ask Eastern Ontario, when was the last time you had a, you had a, a company open that wasn't a, wasn't a call center? When was the last time a manufacturing company set up shop in Eastern Ontario and provided two or three hundred good paying jobs? And by good paying, uh, I mean good jobs. Jobs with benefits, jobs with a pension. And yet that's continuously undermined in all these free trade agreements. It's continuously undermined our communities with these tax cuts. Because every tax cut is financed by the loss of services in our communities. And we can see that. Our schools are going downhill. Our, our young people come out of uh, universities, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in debt. Our, our hospitals are continuously under siege, are continuously reorganized, and are continuously short-staffed. And they're continuously farming out services which were once provided free of charge to the public are now are now charged with with extra user fees and privatized and so that now you have to pay for now you have to pay for what used to be covered by your taxes now those tax breaks that went to corporations they were supposed to pay for were supposed to provide new jobs you know if, if the rich only were rich enough well guess what the rich could afford to pay taxes, the rich can pay taxes, the rich should pay their share, because guess what? In the end, if they paid their taxes, they'd still be rich.